Well, hello all, this is Robert Butler again for Jack Jack's Scratch Build Challenge. Today I'm going to show you how I build vents, stain them, cut them, get them ready to be used. So we start with just the wooden dowel. I turn this, broke this down so it'll fit on screen. First thing I like to do is just take a hobby nut saw. Just kind of rub down here a little bit. That kind of gets your rough. And you can do little ones so they're not all the same. So as you cut them, they don't make a full row. Of course, as you stain them different colors, they all disappear. And then I like to take a wire brush and get a few more. few more grains in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but once I stain it, you'll see it. There you take one of these. Rotate that out. for a this is some black I had made up I don't have to cover it fully. And then while it's wet, it can dry it off a little bit. Same brush, who cares? All ends up the same place. Come in here with some light brown, almost tannish. Don't want an even coat, don't want them looking identical. Each piece should look its own, have its own character. Get a little bit more in there. What else is nice too is Vallejo makes a model wash. For light colors, this is just brown. And mix it up here a little more. There we go. And get some of that on there too, just to Caps back on, otherwise I know this will end up on my lap, as they always do, don't they? And come in here and scrape off some of that. Oh, 
is, of course, not. Mm. Yeah. Come in here with some more brown and those bare spots that we have now. Kind of those bare spots. Hit those with a little more brown. Some more black, darken that up a little more. I think I shook that enough. There we go. Let that dry a little bit. And then got that all looking a little. Those are going to make some really nice bends. Grab our Northwest short line chopper. I'm going to make mine about an inch and a half long. I'll just mark that there. Chop away. There you go. <laughs> See, I'll go flying around. Flying away. I see we got all the wood grain in there, all different colors. As you take photos of them real close up, though, that will just pop out and each one will look individual and look good. And then once these dry, you can always come over with some more black stain and kind of go over it a little bit. Give them more of the color so they all match if you want. But I got quite a few made up. So next video will be gluing them together and making them all work. I also do the same process for the top posts. These were some I had built that I tore apart. So that's why they're a little funny looking. I'm going to use those and stain them up a little more and utilize those for this build. And then finish project. Product. Yeah. So let me get some things around and we'll go to building them. Hello again. I have a question for the community out there. Is everybody else tired of this too? Where you're on this chopper, chopping wood, and then your guide moves. How do you stop that? question out there in the community I'm still looking for an answer I've tried a couple different things but if you're chopping anything harder than balsa wood it ends up moving moving your guide oops even this there we go try another one here just try to square these up. I had them cut at angles for making those other bents. But since I'm using them all as straight here, that wasn't so bad. Try another one here. Nope, moved. Just one of those dilemmas, you know, small issues. Yeah. 
Let's clean this edge up here first. Sanding these down too before we use them. And once again, yep, back to moving this. So then you end up with nothing the same size. Just a question out there for the community. I'd like some feedback if anybody has that answer. Thank you. Okay, now we're set up, set up here to do some build some vents. I got these, made these up. I made up the other ones. They're actually old mercury thermostat covers. The metal that showed you what temperature it was and then where your set point was. Just pop these out. And then I also use the covers, which went over that. That's what they used to look like. Pulled those off. And out of this, I took some pieces of, bits of pieces of uh, wood, glued them to them, and made up a template for the vent. Which worked really well with the side angles. And... It will work for what I have here. I kind of a little more light on the subject there. There we go. That's kind of the idea. I'm not going to glue this bottom ones, but it's just going to hold it in place while the glue dries. So, take our yellow glue, hopefully this is open, and of course it never does open when you want it to, right? Of course not, that would be too easy. There we go. Just an old CD case I picked up at a trade show. Doesn't have any other better use. Drop a bunch of glue on there, clean some off. Put that there. Little hint with jigs. If you're using wood, don't use a wood jig. Use a plastic or metal one. And if you're using plastic, make a wooden jig so your glues don't stick to them. Now once that dries, leave that in there until it dries. And it doesn't matter that the bottoms are a little uneven. We'll be fixing that with the scenery once we get them into place. There we go. This is old wood veneer for a piece of furniture that was left outside. Just peeled off a piece of the veneer and cut it into strips. I'll just go ahead and glue that right there. I'll just grab some glue. Oops, that one's not supposed to be there. There we go. And then use your thumb. Oof. Cut that off, sand that down once, once it's dry. There we go, set that off to the side. Now we'll do another one. Hey look, another jig. So I'll grab another top sill. Four more legs that we cut, run away. Glue those up. Another bottom 
piece here. Squeeze that in there now. Yeah. There we go. Another jig. I'll grab that same piece. Just gonna let this side out. There we go. Break that off. There we go. Squeeze everything in place there a little bit. And I don't worry about the glue too much at this point. What I like to do is let it dry here a little bit. Grab your hobby knife. And then just kind of pick it out once extra. Kind of clean that up a little bit. I like to let it set a little bit, then you know that it's starting to dry in there. Pick at those a few times. There we go. Let those two dry. Go do something else. Come back. Build two more. See you in a bit. Bye. Well, I'm well. I'm back. Okay. Went out today. I did that thing this morning, and then my phone died. So I cleaned it up and got a new mat today. It's a OLFA. As on sale at Michael's. Figure it out. Get it. Something a little darker. Hopefully better on the screen. Feedback on that would be good. Um, so I made a few more bents today. Um, there we go. And I took some Titchy Nut bolt washer castings, really small, number 8016, which I think uh, is the uh, 200 piece HO, one and three quarter nut, two and a quarter inch washer for HO, just the right size for SN3 even. So use those. Painted them um, with model color sky gray. I decided this time to try and uh, do the shafts too, maybe make them easier to see. And then as I cut them, be able to pick them up maybe a little easier. All I use is my from PBL. Put them into this. There we go. Leave those in there. Put that back. Grab my little tweezers I might use for those. And another recent purchase to try was a Jim Holtz retractable craft pick, which is this little thing, and the end of it will pop out to different lengths. I stay to the first one. And then just pour, pushed it, lined it up here with the center of the beam, center of the cross member, 
and just pushed it in and rotate a little bit. I think it's going to make a nice hole to be able to put those nut bolt washer castings into. I just went ahead and did all four of those spots. Track that. Now what I do, get on the head, dip a little yellow glue in. Slide them in, push it in. You'll get a few of these that'll just fly away and uh, grow some wings and and then some uh, really really long legs when they when they hit the ground. And there goes one. <laughs> always buy extra of these think you need two packages buy four I'm going to be doing this off camera. I'm just going to get her to show you guys kind of what they look like, hopefully. There we go. That pick really does a good job. And as you can see, if you can. And then once they're built, I'll come in with just a little bit of uh, rust stain once they're dry. And in place properly. Come in maybe with a little rust stain and just do a little streak down and a little bit on each one just to highlight them a little bit, give them a little bit of rust. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at and that's where I'll be. And I got billed, I think, 12, 14, 12 or 14 of these total for my project on this one. So I'll get a building and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Well, good Sunday morning, 8.43, yeah. Um, last night, I got these four completed. I got four more where all I have to do is the back. I already got the nut bolt wash. No, no. I got to drill the holes and put nut bolt washer castings in that one and that one. These are done. And that one, just got to do the back side there, and then that will be done. One in the jig drying overnight, and I didn't do another one. Oh, that's where I'm at here so far. And, uh, yeah, I'll put this one out and make another video on finishing these up. Um, till next time, this is Jack Rob Butler with Jack Jack's uh, Scratch Build Challenge. We'll see you in the next video. God bless, and you guys have a great day. <laughs> Bye.